Hi everyone, this is Lisa Marie from Artistry by Lisa Marie, and today I'm going to talk about layering colored pencils. So right off the bat, I have the pencils chosen, the color scheme I'm going to do, so a dark, medium, and light uh, orange, and then I have the opposite color of that, which is a dark blue, and my white pencil. Uh, did a quick circle here. And next, what I'm going to do is figure out my light source. So I'm going to say the light is coming from this direction. And the reason why I, uh, I'm talking about light source is because a lot of, look, it's a light bulb. <laughs> um, the reason why <clears throat> I'm talking about light source is I'm not just going to be layering color pencils. I'm also going to talk a little bit about shadow and shading. So just a little visual there. Light's coming from that direction. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start by blocking out my shadows now that I've figured out my light source. Uh, so what I'm going to do real quick is so I just started with a circle. I'm going to take the blue, this dark blue. Uh, it's indigo blue. These are all Prismacolor pencils that I'm using, by the way. And this is just a sketchbook that I'm using. So it's it's a little heavier paper, a little bit rougher paper, uh, which is what I want so I can layer my, my colored pencils. Uh, I want a little bit of texture, a little bit of tooth in this paper so I can do several layers of color. If the paper is very smooth, um, I can't do as many layers of color, can't play as much with the pencils. And I want to show you just how I can play a little bit with uh, layering colored pencils. Um, so here I'm just blocking out my shadow. So we're going to make this a bit more of a three-dimensional image. Uh, and the reason <clears throat> why I'm doing shadowing as well is I do a lot of... Um, grayscale coloring pages and grayscale coloring pages are all about shadow and light and all that good stuff so there we have a bit of shadow right there and if you really want you could just say so the light's coming from that direction so do a bit of shadow here too check it out and yes i'm clearing my throat a lot uh my my three-year-old gave me another head cold. <laughs> it is the season of head colds here in my house. Anyone who has small children knows uh, in the winter, it's just, it's all head colds all the time. So there, we've just blocked out shadows. So <clears throat> the reason why I chose blue is because all the other colors are oranges. So dark, medium, and light. They're all in that orange family. This is more of a orangey yellow, but still in that orange family. The opposite of orange is blue. The opposite being the opposite on a color wheel. So if you ever look at a color wheel and you see blue, look on the opposite side, there's orange. All right, so <clears throat> brown, by the way, is orange with black added to it. So it is orange. Uh, it's a darker shade of orange. And I've blocked out my blue shadow. And now I'm just going to gently layer color that darker shade right over that shadow. And right away you can see that darker color, the darker um, brown, as I gently layer it over the blue, they naturally just start to blend together. And I'm not pressing hard. I don't want to fill in the tooth or the texture of the paper right away. I'm just trying to get that first layer of color right on the paper. Be very gentle and I'm not going all in just one direction so it's not just going this way or this way uh, I'm actually applying the color in soft gentle circles 
or in all different directions. And that will help fill in the tooth of the paper and it'll help the colors blend together smoothly. So first, first I'm just getting the shadow still sort of blacked out. And then I'm gonna, so that's the darkest part right there. And then I'm just softening the edges and then I'm gonna pull some of that brown out a bit from the blue. And by pull, I mean apply a little more color outward. Very gentle. See how my hand is a bit further away from the tip of the pencil? Uh, that's a good way to make sure that you don't press too hard too quickly. Um, if your hand is closer to the tip of the pencil, you, you naturally just press harder. So there's that. Remember, this is just the first layer of color. So now the medium tone, the medium color is that orange. And I'm just layering it right over that brown. And you can see the colors. Um, you can still see the tooth of the paper. You can see it looks kind of rough right now. Uh, but you can see how the colors are starting to blend together. Some people like to blend with a colorless blender, which is totally fine and absolutely a fun technique to do. Um, but this, this layering coloring technique does not include a colorless blender. Instead, it just sticks with the color palette that we have. And it uses the colors in the color palette to blend. So you can see I'm going over all the way to that dark blue again. Um, I'm not staying over here. I'm pulling this medium tone all the way to that darker area. So I'm layering the colors over each other. And as I layer them, they're blending. And here you can see this is going to be the um, reflective light right here. So I don't pull that darkest part all the way to the edge of the circle. Um, I let this area be a little bit lighter. Um, so it's not really, that's not really part of the layering lesson. So light comes from this direction. The brightest point will be over here, but pretend or imagine that light goes past this ball all the way to the surface behind it and then bounces back to this circle. And that's the reflected or reflective light. So that's what we're capturing there. Actually helps the shape look a little more three-dimensional. All right, so we're getting a lot of this orange down. Then the lightest part of this uh, color palette. Going right over that orange. You see how it's being applied in little circles. And it can go right to that, to that blue, the darkest part. All the way over here. Lots of little circles. We're slowly filling in the tooth. 
of the paper. And remember, this is just the first layer. So we're blocking out the shadow, we're blocking out uh, colors, where the colors are gonna go. Trying to stay in the lines. <laughs> And the light is hitting here, uh, this side of the ball, the, the hardest. So we're going to actually let that stay pretty light. So not as many layers of color. Um, and you can even pull the uh, white pencil out in a minute to really get a, a feel of the that being the lightest part of this. There's your first color, your first layer of colors. Then uh, I'm just gonna pull this dark blue and I'm gonna go even more precise with blocking out the seriously darker section. That blocked in. Pressing a little bit harder. And then very gently pulling that line out, that dark line. Because we still want to blend. I want everything to blend. And then that brown going right over that darker section, that dark blue. And the nice thing with uh, using a complementary color when you're doing shading and shadows and all that stuff is complementary colors, because they're opposites on the color wheel, they, they play very well together. Um, they're very striking next to each other. They're, they provide a great contrast between the two colors. Um, the human eye really likes complementary colors. When it sees them, it, it's drawn to them. So visually, it's much more interesting. And when they blend together, um, it really pushes the, the darkness of the shadow. Uh, doesn't make it black, uh, more it makes it just sort of a rich, a rich shadow effect. So this is the second layer of color. So we're going right over the top of that first layer of colored pencils. Still doing our little circles. Softening this reflective lighting with the little circles. And uh, I, find, I find layering colored pencils very calming. <laughs> so I'll just sort of quietly just layer pencils over pencils over pencils. I um, find it very soothing to do this. So, and it helps if you pick a palette beforehand. <laughs> if you don't pick a palette beforehand, then it can actually be 
not so common because you have to constantly try and think of the next color you're supposed to do. But this is a fairly straightforward color palette, so that helps too. So we're going curving to, uh, in regards to shadow, we're curving around the ball. And as I'm going out towards this oranger area, um, or the lighter area, I'm pulling up a bit. I'm being a, not so heavy handed with the application of the, the brown. Then go with that middle tone, which is the orange. So again, dark, medium, light. So dark, middle, light. Uh, and I say that a lot when I color grayscale coloring pages or when I'm coloring a grayscale image. Uh, grayscale is as easy as one, two, three. One dark, one medium, one light color. And once you start with that, uh, start with that color palette where you have one dark, one medium, and one light, uh, you can expand from there. Then you get, you know, that dark, comp super dark complementary color, or a super light color. You can start adding other colors to the palette. And here, again, we're layering, so the orange is going right over those other layers of color that we just did. We're filling in the tooth with each layer. And over the darker area, darker over here being, um, I am pressing a little bit harder now uh, with the each layer of color. I'm filling in the tooth of the paper. As I get to the lighter area, move my hand away a bit, and not be so heavy handed. You're almost using the white of the paper uh, as a tool. It's white, you want the color to be lighter, so it's okay to, for the moment to let the white of the paper help with that. Lots of little circles. All right that lighter color in the color palette. And uh, another reason why I like to use just the colors in my color palette um, instead of always going for a colorless blender is um, it sometimes, sometimes, some grayscale coloring pages uh, and colorless blenders don't always play well together. Sometimes colorless blenders actually pick up the gray uh, on the paper. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> but it does, uh, which is fine because all you have to do is just use the lightest color in your color palette, and that doesn't really happen. So if you ever color grayscale coloring page, just use the lightest color in your color palette and layer the colors, and you don't have to worry about smudging gray on your paper. So again, it's a layer of color. So we are going right back over here. So not just staying over here with this light pencil, we're going all the way over here. This is why we don't press down too hard when we first start. So there's still a tooth or texture left in the paper to grab and hold on to the colors. 
going all the way to the edge with that lighter color. And you can really see how the colors are blending together. And in the darker areas, yes, you can press down harder. Once you get to you know, the last few layers of color, it's okay to press a little bit harder in the darker areas. You still want to apply in the little circles. Back out. Remember the light is hitting it right here, so we're going to keep that white. And go back. This time I'm just going to take the, um, the brown. We've done a lot with that blue. <laughs> the blue has, is doing a lot of work. Um, so I'm just going to take the brown. and layer again. Still being very soft and delicate in this uh, reflected light area. I don't want the colors to be, you know, heavy handed. Still applying in those with those little circles. Definitely pressing harder now. You can see my, my fingers are closer to the tip of the pencil. Um, so I have a bit more control over where the you know the tip of the pencil goes, but also I can press down a little bit harder. Really filling in the tooth of the paper. And also, I, you know, it kind of depends on the, the texture or feel that you want. Uh, if you want to see, you know, the artist's hand, if you want to see, you know, the gesture of the movement of the hand, then definitely you need to press harder and you need to go in different strokes. That's if you do more of, say, a um, cross-hatching look, then you're going to be applying the colors differently. Uh, but if you want more of a, a soft, gentle, gradual transition of color, then you apply with the small circles. Now that I'm getting into the oranger area, I'm pulling up my hand a bit more. I'm being a little more gentle with this layer of color. <clears throat> All right. Back with the orange. back over that brown softening this area a bit That is one really nice effect you can get when you layer colored pencils as the uh, that soft gradual transition of color. I like that look. Also, the colors seem to um, I don't know glow a bit more when you layer them slowly and gently. The the colors. 
seem to have a bit more of a presence on the paper that way. <clears throat> it's really nice if you're going for a bit more of a realistic look. See, if you've uh, seen any of my other videos, you know I like I like realism. I like going for the realistic, realistic shading, realistic coloring. All right, gently lift my hand up as I go into this lighter area. Looking for where I can see some more paper tooth at all, because we are getting near the end here, so I have to start filling in the tooth of the paper. Take this lighter pencil. Filling in tooth of the paper even more. You can really see, you know, with this lighter pencil now, going right over the orange, I'm filling in sort of the remaining tooth of the paper here. Um, you can see how it's getting pretty smooth. You can go right over to this darker area, and you're not losing your shadows. So you take this lighter color in your color palette. You can go right to the shadow and you're not losing, you're blending, but you're not losing the shadow. You're not losing the, the depth or the, the sense of volume in this shape, even though you're going over it with this lighter color. The lighter color is helping to unify the, the colors in the shape, but you're not losing all the colors in the shape. All right, now we're going over to the lighter area. And we really didn't do much with this spot right here. Um, left it alone for the most part while we did all those layers of color. So now if you want, you can go right to that lighter area, do a light bit of color, and it doesn't take as many layers of color. Um, to do a lighter area it takes way more layers of color to do a darker area. Filling in the tooth with this lighter color. And I'll write down the exact colors I'm using um, in the video description, but this is uh, sand. Um, let's see. This is orange, just straight up orange. <laughs> Uh, sienna brown and indigo blue. So, but I'll write them. I'll write them down for you. So next, we have this lighter area here. Um, if you want to push the the light, the light part of that. Uh, you do that with a white pencil. <clears throat> so again, we've strayed from, so we had our color palette, dark, medium, and light, orange. Push the dark with that dark indigo blue. And now we take a white pencil. And you use that to really get a white uh, spot. And I'm pulling away again, I'm being way more gentle the further I go from that white spot with that white pencil. Um, so it'll gently blend with the other color around it. 
and you can go back, again, still layering, uh, back with that lighter color. If you want to gently blend it a bit more. Now it's blending with the white pencil that we put down. Don't have to do too much when it's a super light area. Like I said, you don't need as many layers of color on white paper for a white or light area of color. That white pencil again. Press down a little bit harder with that white pencil. If you really want like a white, white spot. And that gives you a nice contrast too. So you have a contrast between the super white and the darker area there. And then let's say you really want, really want a darker area, really want it dark. So you can go back. Uh, you can't do this if your tooth is completely filled in or the paper's completely filled in, uh, but you can go back there's a little bit of texture left on your paper. Put the darkest color, a dark contrast blue, indigo blue in this palette. Have to be gentle when you do this. Because uh, now you're really pushing your shadows. And that's really going to push um, the dark area, uh, which is nice if you really want contrast. I'm not going all the way up. There, I'm just staying way further down here with this dark blue. And do this. Take that dark brown, or not really dark brown, but the brown. The darker color in the color palette that I made. Soften it again. Again, you can't do too much extra layering like this if you've already filled in the tooth of your paper, which again is why we go dark very slowly. You're not too heavy handed with your first few layers of color. That way it gives you a little wiggle room to go back and do some other layers of color later on if you want to. Go down here. You can fill in this a lot a bit if you want. I can really see how the blue and the brown blend and that cast shadow. So it, it's called a cast shadow. The ball is casting a shadow. Pressing a little harder here. And I like having that darker shadow there because now you can really see that reflective lighting and how it's coming into play right there. Softening the blending. That orange. And the orange in this darker area 
you know, down here in the cast shadow, uh, it's just filling in the tooth, pressing in quite a bit harder there. I want to get that nice crisp line right there, so I'm pressing a bit harder. Um, Ways to get a crisp line, press harder and have a really sharp pe ten pencil pencil tip. Uh, if you have a really dull pencil tip, you're not. it's going to be a lot more difficult to get a crisp line. But that's also, you know, useful if you want a soft, gentle line. You, you don't have such a sharp pencil. So, we've layered some colors, we showed how to get a, a sense of volume, a sense of shape, uh, talked about some reflective lighting, a little bit of cast shadow, pencil layering, and let's see what else, oh, super bright versus super dark. All right. I think that's it for today. And that's how you layer colored pencils. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. Uh, remember to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video and stay creative. Bye.